Hello, you are with me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability. United Nations statistics estimate that over 600 million people live with disability globally and over 400 million people live with disability in Africa. 40% of Africa's population are made up of people living with disability. 10 to 15% of school age children in Africa live with disability. Ghana's population is over 32 million and 8% are people living with disability. How does this impact on persons with disability in terms of policy formulation, marriage and family life, education, healthcare, employment, and so on? For those of us in the disability community, discrimination and stigmatization is the root cause of almost every challenge we face. However, success only comes to those who know how to overcome their challenges and not those who know how to avoid challenges. So join me, the voice of ability and for persons with disability, as I navigate my way through the riveting stories, the unbelievable experiences, and the life-transforming journeys of persons with disability on The Helping Hand TV show. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the H4P organization is 12 years old. Hooray! And H4P, as part of the 12th anniversary, has launched the Chill Awards. The Christina Hackman Impact Leadership Awards is the Chill Awards. The Christina Hackman Impact Leadership Awards is an award scheme instituted by the H4P organization to honor and acknowledge people who contribute significantly towards national development and especially the development of the disability community. Is the Chill Awards. Eligibility to win the Chill Awards is in the following categories. One, the individual who has contributed to the sports and entertainment landscape in the disability community. Two, in the area of education. And three, in entrepreneurship. Is the Chill Awards. And now, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the call for application for the 2024 edition of the Chill Awards is open from now to 31st October 2023. Kindly visit the Chill Awards website, chillawards.com, the H4P organization website, h4porganization.org, and the Helping Hand Show website, helpinghandshow.com. On this website, click on the process tab from the menu and fill the displayed form with your details. Click on the submit button and receive a notification for a successful registration. You can equally send your nominations via our WhatsApp line on plus 233-209-555-777 or call H4P for further inquiries on plus 233-596-313-338 or plus 233-277-552-208. Here's the Chill Awards. Chill Awards. Chill Awards. The Christina Hackman Impact Leadership Awards. The Chill Awards. Chill Awards. Hello and welcome to another exciting and inspirational edition of the Helping Hand TV show where we seek to throw the spotlight on the abilities of persons with disability. And like I say, you are welcome. Welcome to my world where disability is not inability. Um, special thanks to um, Fast Teacher Paul, FCC, my proud sponsors and DV Unlimited, Company Limited, um, also part of my proud, proud sponsors. Thank you so much. Um, last week we began an incredible discussion on mental health issues. Um, my guest, Deborah Joy Juma, um, a mental health activist all the way from Kenya, um, was sharing her life with us, motivating us, educating us. Um, I'm bringing you the continuation of that incredible, amazing um, story on the Helping Hand TV show today. Um, I hope you enjoy it. We'll go for a break. When we come back, I'll take you straight into the continuation of the interview. It's a Helping Hand TV show. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. You are with me, the voice of ability on air for persons with disability. And today, I want to introduce you to someone with so much ability. Some people call her the greatest friend. Others call her the sweet companion. And others still call her the faithful worker. She is dependable, reliable, 
and adorable. And she's committed to lending you a helping hand anytime, anywhere. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome DV Cleaners. <laughs> DV Cleaners Alata Samuna Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Aloe Vera Shower Gels. DV Cleaners Body Lotions. DV Cleaners Hair Shampoos. DV Cleaners Hair Conditioners. DV Cleaners Liquid Detergents. DV Cleaners Hand Wash. DV Cleaners Floor Cleaners. DV Cleaners Toilet Cleaners. DV Cleaners Cake Soaps. And now introducing DV Cleaners Hand Sanitizers. For bulk purchase, call us on plus 233-278-308-246 or plus 233-244-467-326. DV Cleaners, one of the top most made in Ghana products. DV Cleaners, proudly Ghanaian. And so remember that anytime you purchase any of the DV Cleaners range of products, you are lending a helping hand to a person with disability and you are supporting H4P organization's special advocacy for persons with disability. DV Cleaners! Nature's finest touch! Welcome back. Previously on the Helping Hand TV show. Later in life, when I became an adult at 24, that's mm. where I knew that I have actually, I, I actually had uh, depression because I would find myself sleeping over break time outside and coming to class like uh, after two lessons are over. Luckily, I passed my KCSE, my, my national exam. I passed very well. Wow. So now this is how I got myself into surviving in, in uh, university. I looked for um, farms that were near the, the university and then I would work there during the day. They didn't pay me much. They just paid me something for food. And then I would also work in people's houses as a nanny, as a house help. Wow. But um, this was so hard because I found myself doing weird things in people's houses. There's a day I cooked food with soap, liquid soap, thinking mm. that was in oil, yes. And I, I remember how this lady was so furious and she told me that I'm a witch from the village who had come to finish her farm. Definitely, definitely. I have so many, so many marks, scars on my legs because I would cut myself frequently. And I didn't know it was anything related to mental health until when I got to my third year of university, uh, I started walking around at night. These friends started thinking that I would go out and look for men at night and then come back in the middle of the night. They didn't know that I didn't uh, that I was just walking around and I didn't know what was happening with me. So they followed me up and they found me in the market um, in the middle of the night without shoes, with the, with my night dress and just sitting on a stone. Oh my God. So they beat me and that is how the following day they took me to the health center, which recommended that I go to a county hospital that later found out that I had mental health issues. And wow. they, they diagnosed me with depression. So I was put on uh, psychotropic medication. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of Ability Channel for Persons with Disability. Um, H4P is 12 years old, to God be the glory. And um, we have this special edition coming to you all the way from Kenya with my very, very special friend, Deborah Joy Juma. Deborah, thank you again for your time. You're welcome. Um, I want us to give people a sense of um, the kind of struggles you went through um because still at the university um you didn't even know you had mental health challenges um now you are working as a nanny in people's houses you were cooking with liquid soup um i wonder what other things you were doing no, <laughs> no wonder they would say we are rich from the village and all that by that time had you mastered the english language your communication with people how were you going around all that so um i i i actually did know english because in kenya we do english as a subject okay. but um it wasn't grammatically correct okay. so for a person who who was keenly listening to me they, they would struggle to understand what i was saying okay so i i got a job in this family that finally labeled me a witch i actually got a job with the, <laughs> the, this family, they, mm. they, they only communicated in English. Okay. So this is what I had to do. Every morning, 
I would take my little phone and then they had Wi-Fi in their house. So mm. that was a savior for me. Mm. So I would Google statements and words and how to join them and how to write them. And then I would really, really speak to myself like I'm talking to someone. I would have conversations with the mirror. Okay. So I just wake up and I'm like, hi, Deborah, how are you? So have you cooked today? <laughs> how is it going? <laughs> and, and I would talk and talk and talk for like 30 minutes. Wow. And I did that every day, every day for like three months and it became a habit. And then I would finally communicate very well. So that's how I learned how to communicate properly. I remember, okay, yeah. let me give you another, some example. Yes. The day I took the kids to 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 a restaurant to eat, mm. and then I had never had the the word hamburger. So, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the kids I asked them, so what are you going to eat? And she's like, I'm going to eat an a hamburger, and I'm like. You want your handbag? And then she's like, no, I'm saying hamburger. And I'm like, I can't, you, you didn't, you, you cannot carry a handbag. You're still very young. <laughs> so we wow. were there for like 10 minutes. And mm. then the, uh, the waiter came and I, I just asked the, the waiter, listen to what this girl is saying. Maybe you will help me. And then he was like, she needs a hamburger. So that day I went home and I was Googling and, and actually the girl went and reported to her mom that I didn't want to buy for her a hamburger. Mm. Because I was just being mean. Mm. But it wasn't... <laughs> That, that, so that, is, was, that is how the struggle was. It's, it's interesting. Um, another struggle I'm seeing that you would have. Um, so you were in the village all your life. You have not seen buses. You've not seen cars. You've not seen all. Now you move to the city. How was that kind of cultural shock like for you? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should talk first about a lift. You know these lifts yes. that help? <laughs> I can only imagine. <laughs> There's this day I go and then uh, I have to use a lift to, to get us to some room. Mm. And then I keep knocking on the door. I knock, I knock, I knock. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can see people opening the, the, the door for me. So, um, and then another guy came and he was like, are you out of, out of your mind? Because I wasn't young, I was around 20. Mm. And then he's like, hey, this is not how this is done. So you press here and then he was teaching me. Then I get inside and I just feel something is moving. But oh I'm my not God. Moving. Oh and my God. <laughs> that was my worst experience. The first experience that I had in the city that was really bad. Wow. <laughs> Wow, yeah, so embarrassing, and and then there's another day also. Mm. Um, I had to to board a bus, so I get into the bus and it's time to alight, alight, and then I stand there. I don't know whether I'm supposed to wait for it to move back and stop because of that inertia force, mm. and then now I come out. So I just get there and I jump off. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I had I had to teach myself so many things, and <clears throat> let me not even mention this. I don't know whether I should mention because now I also go to this house which has some electronic stuff, okay. like the washing machine, the microwave, <laughs> <laughs> and and I had never seen these things in the village. So I'm like. So I look at the machine, I look at how it is rot rotating in the clothes and in the noise, and, and I would just stare. I just so people find me and they're like, Are you planning? So that lady would tell me, Are you planning to break my machine? <laughs> never even I've never seen it. <laughs> and then I would I would and then they had a big TV, a very big television. So I had never seen a TV also. Wow. So I'm there and I'm so um I, I look at the TV and the way people are talking and the way, and I just want to stare and look at it because <laughs> <laughs> so the culture shock was real and everything wow. was just and then I was also used to traditional meals, like we were used we were used to eating sweet potatoes only and then uh vegetables from the farm. So I get here and I see people making donuts. Mm. I mean, things that I had never seen. Hmm. And I'm supposed actually to make for the family. So every day I'm... <laughs> and 
then they keep asking me, is it that you don't want this job or what do you really expect us to do? Because this is what we hired you to do. And the culture shock was just uh, something else. Amazing, amazing. Let, let me go for a break. When we come back, we'll go back to her working on the farms and then um, how she managed um, all throughout. Incredible story. Incredible story. We'll go for a break. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. Success is a product of hard and wise work. A 60 Second Success with the Bishop. Stay tuned. Welcome. Welcome to 60 Second Success with the Bishop, where I give you success nuggets for a successful life. In order to achieve success, there must be the right mix of various factors. Discipline, determination, excellence, patience, integrity, hard and wise work. Success doesn't happen automatically. Success happens intentionally. To succeed in life, you must build capacity enough to be able to rise above the challenges and difficulties of life. Challenges don't discriminate. Challenges don't differentiate. Challenges are inevitable. Challenges don't escape race. Challenges don't escape status. Challenges don't escape gender. No matter who you are, you will encounter challenges. Remember that your ability to rise above challenges is integral and necessary on your success journey. It has taken 60 seconds for me to give you this success tip but it will take more than 60 seconds for you to put it to work in your life. So start your journey to success now. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show with me, the voice of Ability for Persons with Disability. This is um, the special edition. My very good friend, Deborah, is still with me here all the way from Kenya. Um, Deborah, thank you so much for for being strong thank you for being strong um i want to dive straight into the story um you you had to then work um on farms mm -hmm. all this while you were having struggles with mental health issues um you didn't even know yourself um the pay they will give you the salary they will give you on the farm will not take you anywhere in addition to that you were squeezing yourself to find a room you mentioned that it created a problem later on what problem was that so it, it is actually illegal it was illegal in in the university i was in to okay. Go okay. a bed with someone so um uh i i had shared the bed for several times hmm. and now this one night I, I i'm just sleeping so my friend would sleep facing the other side and i would sleep facing the other side mm. so uh a, 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 a night attendant was just passing by and he saw somebody sleeping uh, he saw a head on this side and another <laughs> head on the other side in the same bed so this guy <laughs> This guy marked the room mm. and then um he, he didn't he didn't uh he didn't call out he just walked slowly and then came knocked on the door the door was locked so he just opened and caught us red handed <laughs> on the same bed. and then <laughs> and then um he knew my name so he uh, he asked me Deborah what are you doing on on Mercy's bed because they knew I had not paid for accommodation and I was not allocated that room mm. like that we were not very many in that university because it's a satellite university of an, a, a main university somewhere. okay so, so they asked me what am I doing in, in that bed and I couldn't even explain <laughs> so I pretended I was so sleepy <laughs> <laughs> that I could hear. So I pretended that I wasn't hearing and I, I tried to mama. And then I was like, where am I? Where am I? What is going on? And I pretend that I don't know what was happening. So this guy told me, you want to, to make a fool of me. I'm going to embarrass you. So tomorrow you be prepared to face the disciplinary committee. And I was like, uh, what are you talking about? I'm, I'm trying and, and pretending that I don't know what was happening. Mm. So 
when when he left my friend just told me you will have to bear the burden because now when you are caught you are supposed to pay for accommodation for that that whole semester that's the fine you pay for accommodation for the whole semester and then you are discontinued for one year oh, so wow. you 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 go home for a suspension of one year then you come back so i didn't want that for myself but i didn't i, I just i prayed i actually prayed i sat on the chair and i told god god uh, you know why I was sleeping on this bed and you know I didn't have anything. And you know, when we say that miracles happen and God still answers prayers, yeah. which is very true. Yeah. Because I prayed and I just told God out of an, uh, a genuine heart because he looks at our hearts yeah. and he knows how the condition of our hearts. We may lie, we may say other things, but he looks at the heart. Yeah. So I told God, you know my heart, you know what was going on. So just help me. Tomorrow I have to face this disciplinary committee. So I went. And before you 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 go to the committee, you have to go to the housekeeper first. So the housekeeper will file the case for you. Okay. And now you with the housekeeper will go to the disciplinary committee. So when I go to the housekeeper, I just told her my whole story without hiding anything. I told her this is what is happening. And that is the actually the weekend that I had been chased away from that family that had called me a witch. Okay. So I told her. I was working here and this is what has been happening and that is why I'm here. And I remember telling her, I want us to talk like women. <laughs> <laughs> and then and, and, and she she couldn't she couldn't say anything much. She actually shed tears and she told me, I'm going to help you. You will not go to the disciplinary and wow. then I, I will move in with you. So you will stay at my place. And then um, you will be coming to school. Whatever we will get, we will eat together. And she was wow. staying alone at that time with her grandchild. So I moved in with her and we stayed together. She didn't have much, but I had a safe place now to stay. Mm. So we stayed with her and that's how I couldn't land in the disciplinary committee. Mm. And then now I had to look for a reasonable job. Uh, she told me not to look for jobs in people's houses and on farms because I also didn't want to be dependent. Yeah. So, so I I looked for a school and I got a school in the remotest part of. Uh, okay, from that place uh, where my school was, it was a bit interior. Now you go interior. Hmm. So I, I I went and and worked there and I remember I had to use um these lorries that carry bread every day. So I would sit at the back with the crates full of bread. Okay. And then we they go uh, selling bread here in different distributing bread and finally I get to the school that I was teaching so it would take me like three hours to get to that school wow. and then three hours to come back so I survived that wow incredible um one of the main things for me has to do with how you still maintained your Christian faith in spite of what your dad did in spite of all the abuse and all that how were you able to still believe in God and still maintain your Christian faith? Now, what I would want to say first, because before I talk about how I maintained that, um, you know, Jesus said that follow me. He didn't say follow the pastor. Mm. He didn't say follow your father or mm -hmm. follow your mother or follow. He said follow me. Yeah. So I I had to draw the line. Who am I following? Mm. Who have I believed in? Yeah. Have I believed in God or have I believed in a man? You mm. know, because the Bible talks, tells us clearly that God is not man, you see. So I, I had to really come to a point of knowing that the person I'm looking unto is Jesus and it's not these other people and these are these are, these are just side shows and some of them are just mediums to carry me and some may be good, others may not be good. Mm. So this is my relationship, me with God, you see. And I, I don't want to, to sound perfect and mm -hmm. say that it was always easy for me to do it because there are times that I couldn't even pray. But those are the moments where God was gracious enough to just look at my heart and, and to carry me through. You see, there's this story I was reading. I don't know whether you know it about the, the pilgrimage story where this guy was walking with God and they were walking together. Then at some point, God carried that person. Yeah. And then when they got to the end, uh, this guy said, look, it's only your feet that are here. I was walking alone and you are not there. And God told that person that I was carrying you in yeah. that moment. Yeah. So for me, I would say 
it is purely God's grace that has carried me and made me remain sane mm. in the situations that I was in. Mm. And when you are faithful, mm. when you um you are true to yourself, you are authentic to God. There's a way just God helps you deal with life. You see, I had a choice of like uh, dating older men in university. Mm -hmm. I had that choice. I had a choice of doing prostitution. I mm -hmm. had a choice of just there were other easier ways of making money mm. but you see i i stood my ground and i said i i don't want to do this because this is not my line this is not my faith this is not my value and god uh rewards that yeah so i would say my faith has also come from the faithfulness that i have practice the mm. authenticity that i have stuck because at some point uh, i will tell you that i moved in with a with another family that yeah. is taking care of me even now because I'm, I'm living with a family right now a very good christian family and things that win over uh people uh who also want to help you is your authenticity mm. your integrity so <clears throat> i would say how i was able to survive is purely god's grace but also living the faith walking the faith and not just speaking it and mm. not doing it so i lived what i spoke because when i read that um god is faithful to carry on what he started in you the work he began in you until completion i i look at my life and i say yes i'm going through this right now but the bible tells me that god who began mm. he who began the good work in you will carry it on so i tell myself and i i look at the the scriptures and we are pressing on to the mark of the upward calling mm. fixing our eyes on jesus and all these things would encourage me so there is no way i would lose my faith and also just knowing that without faith you are actually doomed and this is what i want to make it very clear especially for people who are going through mental health issues yeah put god out of the equation you are doomed yeah because if you are feeling hopeless you are feeling sad you are feeling withdrawn you are feeling all these things but you don't want to incorporate god in your life it is done for you yeah. because the only source of hope for you is god because even people get tired you see if yeah. you are having hallucinations you have you're overly crying and doing this you you draw energy from people and you you give them a lot of burden also to take care of you mm. i know they shouldn't we shouldn't say that mental patients are health patients are burdens to us but honestly they yeah. they they draw some energy from us so faith is just what carries you on mm. i mean just believing that i am not alone I am not talking because even the psalmist says that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for you are with me. Yes. In that valley of the shadow of death, you are feeling really low. God is the only solution. So faith, faith cannot, you cannot do without faith, even in your mental health situation. So, Deborah, did you have other Christian friends that would encourage you, spare you on? Because I'm I'm looking at somebody watching us now having challenges with mental health issues and um the person might be a christian um but the person doesn't have any support group any christian friends around them to encourage them when they get to those their low moments yeah you see uh <clears throat> the book of hebrews talks about not neglecting fellowship yeah so fellowship or uh, really helps us especially when you are dealing with very painful situations and of course it's not everyone that can understand your journey even in, in christianity because we have christians who will label you you ha we have some who will backbite you yeah. we have some who will but there is always a remnant mm. there is always a open your eyes tell god to open your eyes and open your heart to connect to the right people mm. when you get connected to the right people you will still you will survive you will go through it and you will emerge victoriously because even for me uh i would say just as you've asked it is my friends who would also encourage me they would tell me uh you're doing this and you're going to survive and you're going to thrive and things will be okay mm. and just hearing from them and also encouraging myself with the scripture it helps me you see if we have let's say some zebras they are in the grazing field mm. and then a lion comes and these zebras are 
herding together, they are, they are eating grass together. And then one of them decides, I want to go this direction. So this one goes alone. Yeah. You see? So walking alone, maybe it's it's not a nice a nice place for grazing and all that, struggling alone. And these other are, others are together. If a lion comes to this group that is uh, um, full of the zebras, they, they they will be safer than this one being chased alone. Exactly. So when the when the enemy comes with all these, uh, you know, mental health comes with a lot of things. You start thinking, I am not good enough. I am not whatever. I am not. I don't deserve this and that and the other. So when you are in a group of the right people, they will remind you. They will remind you that when you're fellowshipping with them, they mm. are talking about uh, because I, I I I believe when you are meeting together to fellowship, you have stories you share, yeah. you connect with each other, you bond together. So it is very true that when you walk alone, you will suffer more. Yeah. So you 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 need to be you you need to be around people who will help you and of course if these people are also not helping you you have a right and a choice to look for your tribe definitely definitely yeah. definitely i'll go for a break when i come back i'll ask about your three younger siblings yeah. how were they going to be taken care of and all that um it's a happy health tv show it's been exciting fascinating we'll go for a break we'll be right back stay tuned Is the music segment on the Helping Hand TV show. You move mountains 
Disability. Hooray! It's H4P Showtime. Stella, what is it? It is good you have asked. It is very good you have asked. Tracy, there is a humongous storm brewing in my house. There is a gigantic conflagration threatening the peace in my marriage. And it's all sponsored by your husband. My husband? Collins? Hey, and if I may ask, how many husbands do you have? Okay, um, how do you mean? Hmm. Eh? Tracy, your husband wants to destroy my marriage. Ah. Hmm? Your husband wants to destroy my marriage. And from all indications, he might succeed. He might succeed, though. Hmm. Tracy, I beg you. Hmm? I beg you in the name of God. If you are part of this conspiracy, kindly resign. Hmm? Please tender in your resignation. But, but if in any case, you are not part of this diabolic plan to spoil my marriage, then Tracy, Mrs. Tracy Williams, I beseech you by the omnipotent, almighty, and everlasting mercies of God, advise your husband. Purchase copies of the H4P Melodrama DVDs today. Contact H4P on plus 233-209-555-777 or plus 233-596-313-338. All sales are for the promotion of our disability advocacy. So grab your copies now. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the H4P organization is 12 years old. Hooray! And H4P, as part of the 12th anniversary, has launched the Chill Awards. The Christina Hackman Impact Leadership Awards is the Chill Awards. The Christina Hackman Impact Leadership Awards is an award scheme instituted by the H4P organization to honor and acknowledge people who contribute significantly towards national development and especially the development of the disability community. Is the Chin Award. Eligibility to winning a Chin Award is in the following categories. One, the individual who has contributed to the sports and entertainment landscape in the disability community. Two, in the area of education. And three, in entrepreneurship. Is the Chin Award. And now, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the call for application for the 2024 edition of the Chill Awards is open from now to 31st October 2023. Kindly visit the Chill Awards website, chillawards.com, the H4P organization website, h4porganization.org, and the Helping Hand Show website, helpinghandshow.com. On this website, click on the process tab from the menu and fill the displayed form with your details. Click on the submit button and receive a notification for a successful registration. You can equally send your nominations via our WhatsApp line on plus 233-209-555-777 or call H4P for further inquiries on plus 233-596-313-338 or plus 233-277-552-208. Here's the Chill Awards. Chill Awards. Chill Awards. The Christina Hackman Impact Leadership Awards. The Chill Awards. Chill Awards. Welcome back. Hello and welcome back to the Helping Hand TV show. Um, 
This is an incredible show um, with a very incredible personality. Deborah Joy Juma is my good friend, my special guest for today, coming all the way from Kenya. Um, Deborah, again, thank you for your time. Welcome. Um, let's talk about your three siblings before we shift the discussion. Um, there will be a responsibility. Your mother is grappling with her own um, mental health issues, emotional issues, psychological issues. How did you manage to take care of your younger siblings? Yeah, so I, I need to mention first that my siblings really trust trust in me. Mm. They, they, they see a, a very strong person because that is what they tell me. And I am a very good model for them. Mm. Even the, the, the twins, the, you would see them draw things and color and say this is uh, set apart for God and such things. And you would see that wow. in, in their pictures. So um, I am actually the one who has help them go through school mm. my my brother who is who follows me who is younger than me just completed her, his university also Great. and all this time i i had to stand up and i have i have an older sister my sister is one year older than me okay. but um her life is just i i wouldn't say that um it's not very good but you you can you you wouldn't want a child to follow in her steps mm -hmm. so i had to really stand up and uh, uh help my siblings understand that this is the way life should go and in as much as we are facing this and this and the other we don't need to do one two three for us to be what we ex we expected to be mm -hmm. so i i really had to, to do a lot of follow-ups and visit like my brother who who follows me i had to visit him in school a lot and mm -hmm. talk to him and share my experiences with them like what i was going through how my life in the city was and then i also ensured that they had at least what they needed yeah like uh, when they needed uniform when they needed books when they needed, at least they were, they, I, I would explain to them and tell them, you are not going to get the best mm. because we are not in that position, but you can make your life what you want it to be like. Yeah. And I would talk to them a lot and nurture and mentor them. And, and I think they look up to me like just like their mom, because Great. I have been there for, for them a lot. And even in moments when I was breaking down, because there are moments that I also felt suicidal and I tried committing suicide twice. Wow. So, and, and these moments when I was in these very, very dark places, I would remember my brothers and, and I would say for my siblings, I have to do one, two, three. And mm. I would tell them, I would tell them, actually, I thought I'm going to die because I can't do one, two, three. And we would encourage each other. And that relationship has continued up to now because I keep sharing with them and talking to them. Of course, now I'm, I'm a grown up and I'm able to afford one, two, three things. So I ensure that they are doing they are doing well it could it it may not be very very nice mm. but at least it's something that is helping them to keep going Castle on the Helping Hand TV show, thank you so much um, for staying with me. Um, this is all time would allow us, and so we are going to stop the interview here. But I promise I'm going to give you the continuation um, of this story, fascinating story, um, next week. Mental health is a very serious issue, and I think that we need to pay particular attention to our mental health, um, every one of us. So it's very important. Special thanks to Divya Limited, Campaign Limited. Um, special thanks to um, Fasty Chapel, my proud sponsors. Um, special thanks to you for always tuning in to the Helping Hand TV show, especially those who contribute to the h for organization through the mobile money system. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to come your way again next week. Until then, remember, disability is not inability. Um, take good care of yourself, stay safe, and God richly bless you.